Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to use Excel so that I can calculate the real cost of everyday expenses. Okay, so I've got this spreadsheet set up in Excel, and it's already finished, but I'm going to delete some things and recreate here. And I'm using this based off of an article that I read recently, where it talks about, you know, that $4 cup of coffee you might buy on a daily basis. What if instead of buying that $4 cup of coffee, you invested it? So that's exactly what this spreadsheet looks at. It takes the cost of an item based on some time to retirement, based on an expected average annual return, and then looks at the value that you could have had had you put it into the investment. And it also factors in, is this something you spent just once? Are you doing it every day, every month, every week, I'm sorry, every year, month, week, or day? Obviously, if I'm spending $4 a day and I have 30 years left to retirement and I think I can get a 9% average annual return, instead I should put that $4 a day into an investment and I would have an extra $225,000 at uh, retirement. So let's figure out how to create this. I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of my information. There we go. Kind of start from a clean slate here. Now it's going to be easy to plug in these first two numbers, years left of retirement, average expected return. There's no calculations. These are just numbers that we want to put in and use for our information. And I'll start off with something small like 5%. So I've got 25 years left to retirement and 5%. Same kind of thing for the cost of the item. Now I started off with uh, something like $4, but then I want to automatically increase the others. So I'll just write a formula for the next one that's going to equal the previous times 1.5. So I'll increase it by 50% and I can bring that down. I can see that I'm getting some pretty unusual amounts. So if I wanted to, I could modify this formula to use a round function. So I'm putting the round function around this. First, I'll be rounding this product, uh, the cell times 1.5, comma, and I think I'm just gonna do a zero here, which will give me an even dollar amount. And then fill that down, and there we go. So now I've got some various costs, and you can play around with this for yourself. Now if I change the first one from four to three, then all of the others will change accordingly. There we go. Now for the hard part, if it's really that tough, we're gonna to be using lots of future value functions. And ideally, we can write these future value functions properly for the first row and just autofill them down so they're accurate for all rows. So I'll go ahead and start in the top left. I'm buying this item just once. Let me zoom in a bit more. And I'll go with an equals FV. So that's the future value function. And there's several arguments that we're gonna use. For the most part, we're gonna need the first three arguments definitely, rate, number of periods, and payment. However, soon you're gonna see that we're probably also gonna need um, one of these other arguments or both of these other arguments as well. Let's go ahead and start off with this first one. Uh, first is my rate, so I'm gonna click on the cell that contains my rate, and I wanna press F4 on my Windows machine to make that an absolute reference, comma. The number of periods is the, cells that is the cell that contains my number of years. That's also going to be an absolute reference, comma. Now I want the payment. Now this one's a little bit unusual because this is basically an item we're just buying once. So there's not going to be a recurring payment every year for the 25 years. So I'm just going to type a zero for that, comma. Now for present value, I'm going to put a negative and then I'm going to click on the cost of that item. So I am using a present value here, closing parentheses. Now I'm putting a negative in because that's a cash outflow. It's money that I've spent, but there's no payment because there's nothing reoccurring. I'm gonna go ahead and press enter, and I can see that this $3 item is really costing me $10 over the next 25 years. Now that I've got this formula written properly, I can autofill it down to the other values. And just so you can get a better understanding, we could change the cost of this item to $1, make it something like years to retirement is one year, and expected average return, I'll change it to 10%. And we'll start to get a little specific, but if I were to show some decimals here, now it would make a lot more sense. So if we saved that dollar and over one year got a 10% return, then we'd end up with a dollar 10, basically. So now that we can see those numbers are working, we can put something more realistic, like 25 years to retirement, I'll change it to an 8% return, 
and we can see that dollar would have netted $6.85 over time. I'll leave the decimals on there for now. Now let's try this. I buy this every year. The formula is going to be pretty similar, but just a couple small differences. That's equals FV future value. The rate is going to be the cell that contains my annual rate, comma. Number of periods, cell that contains my years left, comma. This time I will have a payment because there is a month, there is a payment every year, and that's going to be equal to a negative version of whatever the cost item is. Oh, and by the way, these cell references B4 and B3 need to be absolute because all of my formulas are going to be referencing the years left and the expected average return. I'll do comma, no need for present value on this one, so I'll just do an extra comma. I'm going to get to type, and I'm going to put a one here for the beginning of period, assuming the person is spending this yearly money at the beginning of the year, and we'll get that compounding for the first year included. Press enter, and there we go, and I can now autofill that down. So that's every year. Now I'm going to jump over to every week because that one's a little bit different and then I'll finish off month and every day off camera. So for every week equals future value parentheses the rate is going to be the cell that contains the interest rate divided by 52 because there's 52 weeks in a year. Comma. Number of periods is the cell that contains the number of years times 52. 52 weeks in a year, comma, the payment is going to be a negative version of the cost of the item, comma, comma, and then for beginning of period is going to be my type. Once again, oops, let me just press the one there. Some of these cell references need to be absolute. Just using the F4 key on my Windows machine, press enter. So there's the weekly expense. And I'll just autofill that down. There we go. So now I'll turn off my recorder and finish up month and day. And now our calculator is complete. So for the monthly version, I took my rate, divided by 12, took the number of years left, multiplied it by 12. For purchasing every day, I took my rate, divided by 365, number of days per year, and multiplied the years left by 365, because I need to know how many days left until retirement. And those have increased compounding, and of course more money is being spent, so those have a tremendous impact on the cost. And that's just for something that's a dollar a day. If I put this back up to $4 a day, so $4 a day at 8% for the next 25 years would be 116 grand. And if you're really young, let's go ahead and put down 40 years to retirement at 8%. Now we're talking almost half a million dollars for that $4 a day habit, whatever that $4 a day habit might be. So have fun with this and try to learn from it. It's basically a calculator that lets us know the impact of regularly occurring costs.